Hey all this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're doing some more AP Physics um, 1 uh, free response questions. We're moving on into, um, uh, this is the first video doing, I think, what did I choose? Um, harmonic motion. <laughs> Sorry, so this is the first of the harmonic motion videos, and as usual, I suggest you uh, attempt to do the problem on your own, and then come back uh, after you've attempted the problem. So I have an experiment to determine the spring constant of an elastic cord of length 0.6 meters. A student hangs the cord from a rod as represented above and attaches a variety of weights to the cord. For each weight, the student allows the weight to hang in equilibrium and then measures the entire length of the cord. Uh, the data is recorded in the table below. This is the weight and this is the length. Okay, so this is a spring. Uh, use the data plot of weight versus length on the axis below and sketch a best fit straight line through the data. So this one's pretty straightforward. You're going to just put the data. So 0 0.6 is here. Uh, weight is at zero. So this is the sort of the equilibrium position. Then 0.97 is about, this is 9. 97 would be about there. Uh, we're about 10. <clears throat> uh, 1.24. So this would be 1.1, 1.2, 1.23, 1.24 would be halfway between or so. I would be at 15, about there. 1.37, 1, 1, 2, 3, 7 is about there. I'm about 20. And on 1.64, um, 6, 7, so a little left to here, I'm at 25. Okay. I don't have quite like a straight edge on here. I can kind of um, draw a little, but you know, if you had it on paper, you'd have like a little straight edge that you could uh, connect that to, with. So use the best fit line you sketch a part A to determine experimental value for the spring constant K of the chord. Well, so um, in general, uh, what we need is the, we're looking at the equation that F is equal to K delta X or KX for some people. That's that's sort of the um, the the force, and so the weights are the forces, and then um, I just uh, so like if I say you know we we plotted force and we plotted length, so the slope's just equal to k. So I'm going to estimate the slope to be about let's see, we'll say ten. We'll say this is the point like one meter ten newtons here, and then what's another point that my line goes through? Maybe something over here. Well, we went through this point, so why don't we use the 1.64 and 25 newtons. And so I can take the difference of those. The slope would be 25 newtons minus 10 newtons over 1.64 meters minus 1 meter. Let me my calculator real quick. So that's uh, 15 divided by 0.64. At about 23.4 um, newtons per meter. And you can have a different number than this, depending on how good of a line and how straight you made it go through all the points. Um, the student now attaches an object of unknown mass m to the cord and holds the object adjacent to the point at which the top of the cord is tied to the rod. When the object is released from rest, it falls 1.5 meters before stopping and turning around. Assume the air resistance is negligible. Calculate the value of unknown mass of the object. Okay, so this is going to be a harmonic motion. What's going to happen is as this thing drops, it's going to hit 1.5 meters and bounce up and bounce up. It's going to go like kind of up and down like this, like a spring, uh, a harmonic motion up and down. So what we want to relate is the, um, hmm, this is interesting. This is a weird because like I haven't compressed the spring. It's just that up here, it's sort of an energy equation. Um, I want to look compare the energy here versus the energy here. Well, at the energy at the t at the energy at the beginning, um, I just have potential energy, and we'll say the bottom of where it reaches. We'll say this is one point five meters, and we'll call this h equals zero. You always have to have like a reference point for like the, where the ground is or where like zero height is for potential energy. So let's say zero height is where the, the ball stretches the 1.5 meters. 
So its potential energy is mgh, which is equal to uh, m times g times 1.5 meters, right? Actually, I'll just do it in equations for now, just and then just plug it in later. And then at the bottom, like at the very bottom, it won't have any, so it will gain kinetic energy, but then it will lose some of its kinetic energy due to energy going into the spring, the, the spring, or the cord stretchiness, which we're modeling as a spring. So at this point, it has no velocity because it's about to turn upward. So at the very bottom, it's like slowing down and then it stops and then it's turning around, right? Um, all it has is potential energy in the spring, and that's 1 half k delta x squared, which is the same as 1 half k h squared, because this height, well, actually, what did we say? We said that, um, no, okay, my bad. Uh, delta x would be its stretchiness from its equilibrium length of 0.6 uh, meters. Yeah. So it would be 1 half k, um, 0.9 meters squared, 1.5 minus 0.6 meters, okay? And so that has to equal mg times um, the height, which is 1.5 meters. So I can solve for m in this case. m is equal to 1 half times 23.4 newtons per meter times 0.9 meters squared. Let me scroll up a little. And then I'm going to divide by g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times 1.5 meters. Okay, so I get 0.5 times 23.4 times 0.9 squared divided by 9.8 divided by 1.5. So I got m was about equal to 0.645 kilograms. About again, your numbers might be slightly different because you use a different value of k. Okay, so that's C. Determine the magnitude of the force in the cord when the mass reaches equilibrium position. Sorry, one second. Um, forgot to turn off my phone. Um, so when it's at the equilibrium position, it's down here. It's stretched uh, 0.6 meters. Okay, let's draw a free body diagram of it. Well, I have gravity acting on it. Because I'm at the equilibrium position, um, the spring force is zero. Like, the spring is not going to create any force. Normally, it might have a spring upward, but in this case, no, because we're at the equilibrium position. So this is the only force. So force is just equal to 0.645 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And I got uh, 6.32 newtons, which is rounded. Determine the amount the cord is stretched when the mass reaches its equilibrium position. What do they mean? Uh, maybe I'm confusing what they mean by equilibrium position. Oh, I guess they're saying, oh, oh, never mind, never mind. Uh, because the ball, so 0. 0.6 is just the, sorry, I, I did this one wrong. That's, that's, this is, let me explain what I did wrong. Um, the uh, the equal it's 0. 0.6 meters when it's just the um let me think actually let me let me read this problem again let me just make sure see i didn't attach any weight at 0. 0.6 meters so 0. 0.6 meters is the equilibrium position without any mass attached to it but um in terms of this oscillation the equilibrium position is this is like when the spring force actually equals mg So in this case, um, for one, uh, the magnitude of the force when the mass reaches equilibrium position, the F is equal to zero. Because the uh, right at the equilibrium position, it has maximum speed, and then it's um, uh, it's it's moving at its maximum velocity, and that's because the forces are canceling each other. If I once I stretch a little more, the force on the spring is going to be more than gravity. So what they want you to do is set these equal to each other k delta x is equal to mg. So um, the, the stretching is mg over k. And that's equal to 0. 0.645 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared divided by k 
um, K was 23.4 newtons per meter. This is interesting. I've never had a problem use the same K value that um, usually they would give you a K value. I think that's what they do these days um, rather than rely on your estimated value. So I got 0.27 meters. Now, yeah, that's how much it stretched, 0.27 meters. Calculate the speed of the object at the equilibrium position. Um, we're going to do energy for this one, too. Um, because I, I have all the energy. Let's see. So in my picture, the equilibrium position is 0.27 past the unstretched spring. So um, the spring would be, so this position here, where the ball is at, at the equilibrium position, this distance would be um, 0.6 meters plus 0.27, it would be 0.87 meters. Okay. So when we're going to do the energy, this is actually a little bit trickier of a problem than I realized. Um, so let's do, um, all this potential energy is going to go into two things. It's at this point, all I have is potential energy because there's no spring compression and uh, no velocity. So I have an MGH. And if I say all this potential energy, this 0.87 meters, is going to get converted into two things, kinetic energy for the ball and some spring energy, right? Because we're saying the spring stretch 0.27 meters. So... Um, what I need to solve is for V, so I can multiply by 2 and then subtract this. So I get 2MGH minus K delta X squared equals MV squared. I can divide by M and then take the square root of this. But now I've got to plug in everything. So the mass, 0.645 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, that's G, times H. In this case, the potential energy we're talking about is this 0.87 meters, because that's all where all the potential energy went. We're subtracting out k delta x squared. k is uh, 23.4 newtons per meter uh, times delta x squared, 0.27, oops, 27 meters squared divided by the mass, which is 0.645 kilograms. And what I get for this is a massive 2 times 0.645 times 9.8 times 0.87 minus 23.4 times 0.27 squared. I got uh, 3.8 meters per second. Is the speed in part three above the maximum speed? Yes. And the reason it's the maximum speed is because once I stretch beyond this point, uh, my net force is going to be upward, which is going to be decreasing the acceleration. So I'm not going to write all that out. But basically, as you move beyond the equilibrium position, I'm going to have more force upward. Okay? So my net, my net force will be up. And so the acceleration will be upward, which will slow down the ball. So the equilibrium position is the maximum speed. OK, um, yeah, that was a little bit trickier than I realized. Um, but I hope you found that helpful. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.